Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, all thanks to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai, and double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for having taught me this truth. Okay, and peace to the house of Israel. So, I would like to go into a little bit of history you know, about Nigeria. So, I'll start off by reading from the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse four, verse 6, okay, which quotes, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, saying thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Yahweh, I will also forget thy children. So, as we can read right here, you know, people are being destroyed for the lack of knowledge. The house of Israel is being destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You know, people think they go to school and learn stuff, you know, but in school, I can tell you they don't teach us nothing, you know. Our same oppressors who created our schooling system, you know, how do you expect them to teach us things that would empower us? So this is the problem with the house of Israel. And before I go into this history, I'll quickly read from the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah chapter 33. Verse 6, which quotes, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength and strength of salvation. Okay, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Okay, so here, as we can see, the prophet Isaiah is saying, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. You know, it's written right there. The wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure, okay? But lately, we are not walking by wisdom, knowledge, and knowledge, you know? Even if we go, if we, even if we walk according to wisdom and knowledge, we walk according to wisdom and knowledge. That's the worldly wisdom and knowledge, which is nothing before the Most High. And... Why must we actually, anyway, in order to understand the mystery, just like the apostles of Great Millstone say, you know, you need to understand the history. It is important we go and seek these things out, we study, just like it's written in the book of um, Second Timothy. Let me just quickly go right there, then I'll start off with a lesson. Second Timothy chapter two verse I think fifteen. Okay, right here it quotes Study to show thyself that proved unto Yahweh, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, we can see right here it's telling us once more. That we should study to show ourselves approved unto God. Now, what? But why? Why must we study to show ourselves selves approved? Because the Most High actually knows that the wicked whom He has created, they would change things and you know, turn things around. So the Most High is actually looking for diligent people. You know, diligent men those who love him if you love him you will fear him and once you fear him what's the fear of the most high you know once you start fearing the most high you know you get wisdom you get wisdom knowledge and understanding you start knowing stuffs and this fear once you fear the most high you start observing his commandments as well you know you can't fear the most high and not observe his commandments 
So once you start taking the step, having the fear of the Most High, that's just the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of everything, you know. You automatically start observing the commandments because you fear Him. From the commandments, that's when knowledge comes. There's also a scripture that, that speaks about this, but I wouldn't go into it because I don't want this video to be too long. I'm sorry, that's an error. Okay, we're right back. So anyway, let's go quickly straight into it. It all started, okay, way many years ago, okay? So I am going to start from when our land Nigeria as we know it, Nigeria as we know it is um, is consisted of three major tribes. Those are the Igbos, the Yorubas, and the Awusas. Okay. So there is something we must understand. Okay, about those people. If you go through the history of the Yorubas and the Igbos, and you take the two languages, you know, you compare you would find out that they actually had a language in common before they now break, became two different tribes, okay? So this is history, actually. Um, there are many books you, one needs to, you know, go look these things up, okay? And pray overall to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His only son, begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, to give us the spirit of knowledge and understanding, which is the Holy Ghost, the Ruka Kodash, which will confirm the truth to us, okay? So these people were one people, you know? Then, I don't know, something broke off, you know, still due to the causes that we had placed on us, in the book of Deuteronomy, that, you know, that your eyes shall be evil against your brother, I think it's in the book of um, Deuteronomy chapter 28, one of the courses there. So we broke off, you know, but one thing we don't understand, one thing many of us don't understand is the land which we find ourselves today does not belong to us. That's not our land. That's the land of the Fulanese, the so-called Fulanese, the Aousas, okay? And I will tell you where these people actually come from. So, in order to understand this, I am going to go back and start off from 70 AD, okay? So, in 70 AD, something happened. Let's go like this. So, um, I'm just going to write here. 70 AD, destruction of the temple. Okay, so right here, you know, this is Wikipedia. You can read the siege of Jerusalem in the 70 CE, okay, which is AD, after the death of Yahweh Shai was the decisive event of the first Jewish Roman war, okay, in which the Roman army, army captured the city of Jerusalem and destroyed both the city and its temple. Okay, I'm going to keep reading. Okay. Destroyed both the city and its temple. The Roman army, led by the future emperor Titus, with Tiberius Julius Alexander as his second in command, besieged and conquered the city of Jerusalem, which had been controlled by Judean rebel factions since 66 B BC, okay? Following the Jerusalem riots of 66, and the Judean provisional government was formed in Jerusalem, okay? So I'd advise you to keep reading, okay, to keep reading. It's really an interesting, apart from the fact that here, you know, this is history washed down, but, you know, at the end of the day, we still have 
a lot of truth in it. Okay, only that they wouldn't tell you who the real, the real Israelites are. But right here, when this war happened, actually the Roman emperor, um, the Roman emperor, um, which is um Emperor Titus. Okay. Okay, he carried out this, this mission to conquer Jerusalem. And they succeeded actually because the Most High Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai allowed it to happen. You know, the Israelites were becoming, you know, very very evil. They were going against the commandments. They they weren't doing things the way they the meant to do it. You know, every now and then, the only thing that can keep us solid on our land is by obeying the commandments and following them to the best of our abilities you know that's always been from time so there is something else i'd like to read from here which is the siege of the city began in 14th april c 70 ce okay three days before the beginning of the passover that year the siege lasted for about four months. It ended in 70 CE in Tisha Bav with the burning and destruction of the second temple. The Romans then entered the sack and sacked the lower city. Okay, so you see this thing that's happening here. Take note, you know, they would go before the Passover when they know people are solemn. And it's not the first time that these people, this same set of people, which are the sons of Esau, they are progenies of the sons of Esau. That's going to be another lesson, okay? Whenever they want to attack the Israelites, it's either they go during the time of their Shabbat, when they are observing these holy days, you know, when they decide not to fight, they decide not to do things, you know. So all of a sudden, they always attack them in this period, okay? We have also an account in the book of Maccabees, okay? When the sons of Israel are actually, you know, observing their, their Sabbath. And all of a sudden, the enemy, Antiochus, okay, and his army, they came over and, you know, they destroyed the city, destroyed a lot of people and took over. So it has always been, okay. Um, here you can see the Ark of Titus celebrating the Roman sack of Jerusalem and the temple still stands in Rome, okay. So if you go to Rome today, you're going to see the Ark of Titus, you know, which is a commemoration. It's a celebration of their success in, you know, destroying and taking a land that doesn't belong to them. But anyway, it's all the will of the Most High that has brought all this, okay? So let's go back. Now, let me show you what the Ark of Titus looks like. Here is an image of the Ark of Titus. Now, let me go to images. So let me see if I can open up one. Okay. So this is the Ark of Titus, you know. They actually built this monument in um, in Rome to celebrate their victory over the sons of Israel. So as you can see right here, they actually had the, I believe it's the, it's the Ark of the Covenant. You can see right here the menorah, okay, that represents, you know, completion, you know, it's the menorah that was found in the temple. You know, when Moses and the sons of Israel, you know, when they came out from Egypt, they built all these things. So they took all these things away and looted all these things. Then something really important happened at this event because when they came already, the, the Israelites, those who were paying attention to the prophets, you know, they already were informed about this event even the son of the most high yahweh shy when he came let's quickly get the scripture right there so you can find this in the book of um of matthew book 
of Matthew chapter 24 verse 16 okay so this is what Yahweh Shai the son of the most I was telling you know the his apostles that because the apostles were asking him what the sign of the times are going to be of the end of this present kingdom okay so he, he gave them all the signs you know he gave them some signs then he came here what people don't understand is here he was actually speaking of this event in 70 a.d that happened so he said then let them which be in judea flee into the mountains okay so what mountains was, was he talking about was talking about Africa, the continent of Africa as we know it today. Let him which is on the house top not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. You know? But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Okay? For then shall be great tribulations, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. You know, it was talking to that present time. Nor shall ever be. Anyway, this verse is actually a mixture of the future and the past as we are in it now. But here, this verse actually is speaking of those times. Is verse 16 okay it was actually speaking of those times and then there is something about those times because in those times africa as we know it wasn't called africa africa was called the land of ethiopia okay so this i got this from a brother the GMS Watchman. So shout out for the video you did. Okay, which actually shed a lot of light on this history. So you, as you can see, this is an ancient map of Africa. Okay, as we know it today. You know, it used to be known as Ethiopia. You see, Ethiopia, Upper Ethiopia and Lower Ethiopia. It used to be called Ethiopia interior and Ethiopia exterior, you know. So the whole land here used to be known as Ethiopia. Okay, so here we can read. It seems certain, declares Sir E. A. Wallis Budge, that classical historians and geographers call the whole region from India to Egypt both countries inclusive by the name of Ethiopia. Okay. And in consequences, they regarded all the dark skinned and black people who inhabited it as Ethiopians. Mention is made of Eastern and Western Ethiopian, and it is probable that the Easterners and Asiatics and the Western Westerners Africans. Okay. So as you can see, the whole continent used to be called Ethiopia. Okay. And I can prove that to you because we have a record of that also in the scripture. So if you go to the book of Amos. I don't know why this is acting out. Sorry. So if we go to the book of Amos chapter 9 verse 7 here he quotes are ye not as children of the ethiopians unto me o children of israel said the lord have not i brought up israel out of the land of egypt and the philistines from kaftor and the syrians from kid so here here is the point he said are ye not as of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, said the Lord, Yahweh Shai. So as you can see, we have been numbered as the children of Ethiopians. Okay. 
So the Ethiopians actually are also a dark race of people, okay? And there is a reason why I'm saying all this. Because in Nigeria, in the so-called Nigeria, we can never have peace, you know? Because the land does not belong to us, okay? So this is to the Yorubas and to the Igbos, you know, expecting to have some sort of peace on that land. That land doesn't belong to us. Your land is the land of Israel. You fled during 70 BC, during the conquest of the Roman emperors, you know, the sons of, the sons of Esau, you know, when they came to do what they know how to do best, steal, kill and destroy, okay? When they came to do that, we, we had to flee all the way down into Africa, you know. We fled into different parts of the world. You know, some fled into Europe, but a huge number fled into fled into Africa, okay? And let me now open your eyes to something. If you take the Fulanes, the Aousas, and you put them beside, I have some photos that I kept here. You put them beside a so-called, you put them inside a so-called, this is what the Awusas and the Fulani look like. And the Yorubas and the Igbos have this look, you know. And you can read here the book of Exodus chapter 11 verse 7, which says, But against any of the children of Israel, Shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know that I am the Lord. Not put the difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Okay. The Most High puts a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. You know, there is a difference between us, you know. There is a difference between us. And as you can see here, and one thing I'll point out again, if I don't know if you have a friend that is um, a Fulani or Aousa, no matter how they can try to look like us, if you look at their hair texture, even scientifically, we have different hair texture. You know, they have some sort of coily hair, which is um kind of straight, you know, different from our hair texture, even if they might look like us. You know, it's just like the same thing that is happening between the Chinese and the Japanese, they look similar, but they are two different races, two different nationality, okay, in which the Chinese would be the Moabites, the scriptures speak of, and the Japanese would be the Ammonites. They, 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 they both came out from the lineage of, um, of, um, of um, Lot, Abraham's cousin, okay. And we came out from the lineage of um of shame as a matter of fact let's quickly get the scripture so it's found in it's found in the book of um sorry it's found in the book of genesis Um, what chapter was it? The book of Genesis, I think, chapter 10. Okay, here. So I'd advise you, brothers, you know, as we read earlier, you need to study to show thyself approved, you know. So this is the line where we actually came from. Okay. So you see the Fulanese and you know the rest of the Africans they came out from this line. You know, the line of Ham. Ham. Okay. So they actually were the first people, you know, to have, you know, this huge dominion. You know, and they had dominion over the earth, you know, they were the ones that built the Tower of Babel and the Most High crushed it down. They tried to create a one world, 
a one world order just like the sons of Esau are trying to do now so the sons of Esau are actually repeating what the sons of Am already did you know so if you read right here you will see this is this is actually Oh, sorry, okay, here from verse 6, you can read, The sons of Ham are Cush, Cush, okay, these are the Canaanites, Mitzrayim, this is Egypt, that's where you, you um, Egypt came out from, Foot, this is where you have um, Libya, uh, Morocco, and all those, you know, and Canaan, okay, so, and the sons of Cush are Seba, Havila, Sapta, and Rama, and Sapteka, and the sons of Rama, Shaba, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrad. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. And Erech and Akkad and Kalneh and this and the land of Shina. This land of Shina right here. Um I have some maps that I can find out now. You can see it's located where you have um where you have um Ethiopia today. Okay. That's somewhere around there. And out of that land went forth ashore and builded Nineveh and the city of Rehoboth and Kal Kala. So this is just a little you can keep reading, you know, these are the um you know from the from the lineage of Ham, you have the Philistines, the Kaftorines, okay, and you have the lineage of the Canaanites, you know, we got Sidon, Het, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Jirgashites, the Havites, the Archites and Sunites, okay. So the Hausa and the Fulanis, you know, they all came from this lineage. Okay. Then we, they are actually a dark skinned people, just like I showed you in the images earlier. So we, sons of Israel, we came from this lineage. Unto Shem, also the father of all the children of Abar. Okay. So this is where you get the word Hebrew from. Hebrew. Heber, okay. The brother of Japheth, the elder. Even to him were born children, okay. The sons of Shem were Elam, the Elamites are the Indians as we know them. Ashur and Afasad. So this is the line where we came from actually, Afasad. So if I keep reading, you'd see, okay. So here it quotes, and the children of Aram, Huz and Hul and Getha and Mash, and Afasad begat Salah, and Salah begat Eba. Okay, so you remember I told you this word Eba, that's where it said the Hebrew. Okay, this is the line of the Hebrew. And unto Eba was born two sons, the name of one was Peleg, for in his day was the earth divided. And his brother's name was Joktan. Okay. So what they actually meant there that in his day the earth was divided. Let me show you what they actually meant. So I also picked this. At the world one. map as a whole. So as it looks see, like a jigsaw, jigsaw pu the puzzle. Earth actually used to be that, um, was broken up so if you, so if you condense all the together, pieces of land the together in, it will come into one you mass you know just look like i said so just look at a world of, map in the days of peleg the earth was divided okay and joktan began't begat al modad and shelef and Aza madvet and jera and okay you can keep reading and all these were the sons of Joktan, okay? And you see, and you can see, it's read, and the sons of Shem after their family, after their tongues and their lands and nations, okay? 
So we need to understand what happened here. This was a real turning point which they barely teach in schools, you know, because because the same people who are oppressing us, you know, they're those who actually formed our schooling system. So they wouldn't teach us things that would make us bright. That's why the scriptures tell us to study to show ourselves approved. You know, I can make this video much longer and make go into deeper stuffs. But I would prefer to keep it short because, you know, lately people get tired of watching long videos. You know, I'm just trying to get this information out there because a brother actually asked me on the comment section to do this. So, brothers of um the Igbos and the Yorubas, that land you're fighting for is not your land. You all came from the land of Israel. And there is one thing, because now I can see there is almost like a revolution going on, okay? Lots of people have already lost their lives, okay? But there is something you have to understand. There is no other person you can elect in that land that is going to make things better for you. There is no body that is going to take you to the to the promised land as 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 we say okay the only person that can do that is the son of the most high whose name is Yahavashai but the world ignorant the ignorantly call him Jesus okay so this is the proof that nobody can save you it's in the book of um Deuteronomy chapter 28 Slakia yeah. was sixty-eight, and the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way of I spoke unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondsmen and bondswomen, and no man shall buy thee. So here, you know, when we even, when we ran down to the west coast of Africa, when we were being, when our house, houses were destroyed in Jerusalem, in the land of Israel, when the Romans came up, you know, we ran down to Africa. And when we got there, it wasn't over. This Edomite came all the way to West Africa and started selling us taking our slaves, you know, they sold many of our brothers, you know, these are our brothers that were taken to the Americas, you know, Jamaica, um, Haiti, Trinidad and Tobago, so all those islands around, you know, those are the sons of Israel who were being sold as slaves. And when it says Egypt right here, Egypt, if you go to its root word, it means bondage bondage and as we know it today america is the modern day egypt in fact america is the daughter of babylon okay and america is going to be destroyed because that's they've caused a lot of havoc they are the sons of esau and they were created to be destroyed for the day of vengeance okay and these were the same people who actually came as the Romans. Okay, they went to the continent of America where we had the, the tribe of God were already there. You know, the Israelites were already there. Those were the Native Americans, you know. But they got there, they tricked them, killed them, you know, with different diseases, chicken pox and different stops. And they lied that... The continent was found by by the so-called um, Christopher Columbus. But Christopher Columbus couldn't find a continent where people were already living there, you know. So that was the same thing they did, you know, to many other nations. And one thing I need to point to you is 
the so-called Fulanis, the Awusas and all those people, they were part of those helping them. You know, they were part of the agenda. They were helping them to sell us. So people get confused that Africans were selling Africans. Yes, we had some of our own. Some some of our own who were insiders who were also working for these enemies. But mostly the Hausas and the Fulanis, they sold us to our enemies. They also sold us to the Saudi Arabians who made a whole great deal in taking us as slaves, you know. So America, as we know it today, was built on the back of the sons of the Most High, you know, the sons of Israel. So the remnants, still the remnants, we still have lots of remnants in West Africa, like in Ghana, Togo, Benin, you know, and some parts all spread around the, all spread around Africa, you know. You have these Israelites, you know, but they forgot, they forgot their identity, just like the scriptures say. Um, let's quickly get that verse. Let's quickly get that book right there. So, I know it's in the book of Isaiah, I think chapter 66 or so, but I can't remember the verse. Um, the donkey... Okay, it's in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. So let's quickly go get it. Isaiah 1, 3. So here it is. The ox knoweth its owner, and the ass is master's creed, but Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Okay. So it's right there, you know, and there is one more point I would have to pull out in the book of Deuteronomy that we just read. Slovakia, it was on Deuteronomy chapter 20, it was 28, verse 68. So right here, the point I would like to pull out is and no man shall buy thee if you go to the root word of buy here you could also replace it by redeem which redeem means to free you no one shall free you so there is a savior who has been kept aside from the beginning of creation to do this who is the son of the most high his name is yahweh shai that is who we should put our hope on his kingdom is coming because all these people that has done all this to us, they are going to pay for all this. They are still going to pay for what they've done, for taking the sons of the Most High, which the sons of Israel are the sons of God, you know, taking them into slavery and causing all this havoc, you know, putting them into hard bondage. So we should know that in this kingdom right now, we are in bondage, okay? It's not... It's not where we should, you know, try to be comfortable or anything. We should. We just need to pray and hope His kingdom comes quick, you know. So it's not. It's nothing like what the Christians are preaching. That's why I need to do this video to advise you all, come out of the lifestyle of Babylon, because we are all doing all these protests. You know, we want to end SARS. Want to end this we want to remove the president but then we're forgetting the son of the most high okay which without him we can't gain anything you know and people are just so ignorant that you know our our lifestyle we're trying to live after our oppressors we want to be like america but the americans are actually our oppressors you know those are the banking families they create our currencies and all those things and which the money we're just spending is just mere tissue paper. 
which you can flush into your toilet when the time comes. You know, we're trying to live after them. They taught us different philosophies that are just, you know, stupid, stupid philosophies. Everybody is running after a career. Everybody is running after a dream, you know. Everybody wants to become this. Everybody wants to become that. We have lots of musicians, you know. We all we are all just fighting for our own peace of comfort in this kingdom, in which we are meant to pray for the kingdom of God to come. The kingdom of Yahweh Shai, the kingdom of Yahweh should come, you know, where all things will be put into its normal state and we wouldn't have to suffer like this and those who have taken us captives will become our slaves. And that's going to be another lesson. So, my brothers in Nigeria, those, it doesn't, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. It's the spirit that tells if you're, if you're Israelite or not, okay? It's the spirit that tells. So, let me just quickly read one more book before I close up. Isaiah 3. So as I was saying, here it reads, As for my people, children, children are the oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. So what are the ways of your paths? Going back to the commandments, to the laws and statutes of the Most High. Those are, our, those are the ways of our paths. Not Christianity, not Islam, not different, not all these um, all these religions. You know, we have to throw all those things away, and go back to our real ways as the son of the sons of the Most High. You know, this message isn't really for everybody because it's not it's not everybody that we understand, because as we can read in, I think is it, well. I'm just paraphrasing now. Um, I think it's in the book of Matthew, which says, you know, the road, no, is it Philippians? The way that leads to destruction is large, okay? And many are they who, are, who shall run into it. And the road that leads to life is narrow, and few are they who shall find it. Wake up, sons of, sons of Jacob. You are not an Igbo. You are not a Yoruba. You are a son of Israel. That's why you can never find peace in Nigeria. Because Nigeria is not your land. And don't hope on any Namdi Kanu or any, any Yoruba man that is going to tell you that no, we can make things work. No, nothing cannot work. Rather, things are really going to get worse. Because the most I is tearing the spirit of the people. And there is a time written in the book of Jeremiah, which is called the time of Jacob's trouble. It's a time like never, ever before since the creation of the world. You know, there's going to be a huge distress. If you watch the previous video I did, I spoke about it. It's already happening all around the world. And things are really going to get heavier than this. So... Know what your priority is. Your priority is getting your peace of this kingdom. Good luck to you. And if your priority is fighting for a crown, fighting for a place in the kingdom of the Most High that is about to come, then you have to do the work. Put into practice to your best of your ability, the commandment, study, and leave all these false things that you've been taught all your life. Okay? Because when you know the truth, it shall only set you free. But the truth of these pastors and, you know, prosperity preachers and all these people, they don't take you nowhere. So, 
I'll let this um, lesson, I'll leave it here. If there is still more you want to know, if there is anything you'd like to know, you know, you could just drop a comment, you know, by the grace of the most high, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, I'll be able to come back and, you know, do a lesson on whatever you request. So saying this, I'll give all praises to the most high, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and my double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for having taught me this truth. And salutations to my brothers, you know, and a few sisters who are seeking the truth, the sincerity. Shalom.